Welcome to Community Cocktails with Kimberly, hosted by Kimberly Woodard, a realtor for more than 18 years with Ebby Holiday Realtors. She has received numerous awards, including multi-million dollar producer, quarterly and annual company-wide honor roll recognition, VIP customer service award for highest client ratings, D Magazine's best realtor, five-star professional award, and several other recognitions for her success and service to clients. Join her each week as she meets with the top community influencers to help you get to know the area you want to call home. Don't just love your home, love your community. And now, here's your host, Kimberly Woodard. Good afternoon to Community Cocktails with Kimberly. I am super excited and so honored to have uh, the mayor of Plano, and Harry Rossiar and I might know my R's are so bad. So, <laughs> so I've been practicing with my R's all day. And his wife, which is also known as the First Lady of Plano, Tracy. I welcome this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here and um, being my guest. Well, thank you for having <laughs> us. You. So Happy to be here. Great. So we're going to dive right into it and talk about um, Plano. And when you guys first came to Plano, you know, I know that was back in what, 1990? I arrived in 1992. Yeah. So, you know, from that point, you guys arrived to Plano. What were you thinking? I mean, about the city. I mean, obviously, where you are now is not what you were thinking would happen when you moved here in 1992. So, no, absolutely not. I found Plano because I was recruited out of business school to come work for Frito Lay. Yeah. And I got down here and I loved it. And I said, well, you know, I'll be here two, three years. I was single, no kids at the time. I said, oh, probably two, three years, and then I'll head back to the East Coast, where I'm originally from. And uh, lo and behold, uh, two years later, Harry and I, um, we dated, and he joined me here, and uh, got married, had kids, and we never, you know, looked back. And so from 1992, Plano was a much different city in 1992 than it is now in 2019. Um, so, you know, from your experiences, and um, um, it has changed. You know, let's let's talk about and share with the viewers the changes that we've seen. Mm-hmm. Well, there's been a lot of changes in Plano. So, like Tracy said, I came in '94, and our thought were we're going to be here a few years and right. then head back east. I, I grew, I lived in New York. She's from New Jersey, uh, but then you know, like most people you fall in love with the community and you realize there's a lot of things going on. So despite the many changes, a lot of things have stayed the same in Plano. It's safe city, great schools, right. a lot of amenities. But since um, what's really happened is Plano's emerged into its own city. Right. Uh, it used to be known back then as Dallas's big suburb. Yep. Uh, one of the things I've focused on since getting elected is really having our own identity. So now we're all grown up. I call it Plano 3.0. We're yeah. 1.0 was in the 80s when we're a bedroom community. Right. 2.0 was in the um, 90s and early 2000s when we were that big suburb. And now Plano 3.0, we're our own city and we're, we're a work center. Right. You could live, work, and play within our city and not have to leave to do anything, uh, to have, uh, have cultural, educational, uh, recreational opportunities that just, you know, keeps everybody here. Yeah, and I agree with that because I remember when I was younger growing up here, we would travel and you never said you were from Plano. You just said, I'm from Dallas because everyone knew Dallas. So, but now I travel and I say, I'm from Plano. They're like, oh, I know exactly where you are. So it definitely has emerged as that city um, over the years. And I also think you probably would agree with me is that even though it is big, it still has that small town, you know, center of, you know, you know, people know each other and you really know each other in that community sense. So it's a tight knit community. So yes. so when you moved here in 94, did you ever think you would be sitting here as mayor of Plano? Actually, I did. <laughs> oh, OK. I, I, I decided it was uh, early 1990s. I was going to be the mayor someday. I just didn't know it was going to be Plano. So oh, wow. uh, maybe I didn't know it was going to be Plano, but I, I had a vision of being mayor at that point. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you did always have um, political aspirations. And- <laughs> I, I, th- I think being mayor is more of a calling. It's yeah. uh, I, I think it's more it's the highest level of community service. And right. So I think it's less politics and more service. You interact with the people that you affect. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you have to, you know, the the 
the saying is that mayors can't afford to be politicians because you have to get the work done. Right. Uh, you have to, lights have to be on, you know, street lights have to work, the police and fire have to be on the streets, the libraries, the rec centers. Uh, we have to balance our budget every year. And then you interact with the people you affect at the grocery store, at the gas station, at right. place of worship. And so you can't hide behind the desk. You can't no. shut down the city. You just have to do the work. And so uh, it was, I think it was 1992 when I decided I was going to be mayor someday. I, I just didn't know my path would take <laughs> me to Plano. Well, and Plano is, you know, thank goodness, you know, look at all the stuff that has happened in your term. I mean, you know, we've got all these companies here. Um, we had Toyota, of course, other companies as well, but just how much it's grown just in your short short term um, of you know being in office. And yeah, it's amazing how we were, when I first got to Plano in 92, the tollway only went up to Frankfurt. Yes. <laughs> and over the past few years, I mean, it, after that, we just saw tremendous growth, usually in housing. Right. And under Harry's term, he's really brought a lot of um, business development to the city, yeah. which has been fantastic. Like you said, Toyota, Liberty Mutual, J.P. Morgan, FedEx, a number of firms have, have joined us here. Yeah. Boeing, Fannie yes. Mae, Hilti, uh, NTT Data. Uh, we, you know, since we, we came to office in 2013, We've created close to probably somewhere around 30,000, 35,000 wow. jobs. Wow. Median income probably somewhere in the, in the uh, mid 80s, mm -hmm. 80,000, 85,000. And, uh, but it's really been uh, the story to, that has brought a lot of prosperity to the entire North, uh, North uh, Texas yeah. region and, and Collin County because from a housing perspective, uh, money the people that work in Plano don't necessarily live in Plano. They right. live in our cities north of us in Frisco, Allen, right. McKinney. So now in Plano, in a, uh, on a typical day, you have roughly fifty to 60,000 people that come into Plano to work. Right. So we are a employment center in, in Collin County. We, yeah, we certainly are. And then the traffic has yes, <laughs> shown it. Yes. But, it's all those out of towners <laughs> coming into our city. <laughs> what are they doing? No, but it's, you know, but then it's helped the businesses, you know, restaurant businesses, service businesses, because if you usually, if you're working there, it's easier to do, you know, eat there, get mm -hmm. your laundry done there, yes. get your, you know, whatever your services that you need shop um, where you are, are work. And then people want to be close to um, that work. but. It's, you know, I've seen that in myself, um, the dynamics where people are living in Plano, so they're looking, you know, they're, it's kind of like, you know, I'd say spider legs out. Mm -hmm. um, but then what I've also seen happen is that they um, want out and then they've come and they've been like, well, I work here, I wanna move closer in. So then, you know, they end up, you know, deciding I'm gonna sell that house and move um, into Plano to be closer to work. Yeah, so. I will tell you, Plano has so many things to offer. You know, I say all the time, within 15 minutes, I can get pretty much where I need to go, <laughs> whether it's for shopping or great, um, you know, restaurants or medical needs, whatever it is, we have great schools. Everything you need is probably within 15 minutes. I agree. Parks, I mean, it's just phenomenal. Oh, I will say, my mom doesn't leave. She doesn't, she does not leave. <laughs> my dad um, always laughs is that her car has no mileage on it because she has her little bubble, her radio. Yeah. She goes, well, well I don't need great. to go to Dallas well, for anything. I, I, want, I want you to give your mom this pen from the mayor because she, she never leaves Plano, so she deserves that, oh, okay? Make sure mom gets that, okay? Mom, you gonna, see, mom? <laughs> you stay in Plano, mom. <laughs> no, and you know, they've even looked at, do they move out of Plano re retiring? Yeah. And that's, you know, what they've decided is, why would I leave? All my services are here, mm -hmm. everything. And I think that's really contributed to the community that has been built up is that people do stay. Or someone like me that went to Plano and then um, is raising my family and moved back. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, so the, one of the, the fastest growing demographic in the last decade has been senior citizens in yeah. Plano. And the main reason for that is because the model used to be uh, the kids grow up, leave the house, right. sell the house, move to Florida. Right. But that's not the case anymore. What yeah. we're finding with our, our seniors is just what you said. They they have their friends, yep. they have their doctors, they have their amenities, the restaurants they like, and their children, grandchildren, yeah. they want to stay. And so um, many of them are doing a number of things. They're selling their home and, and renting. 
right. and moving into that into what we call our urban centers like in Legacy or in downtown yeah. Plano, or some of them are, are downsizing to homes that are um, more senior friendly, right. smaller yards and things of that nature. And so those have become very popular as well. I, I agree, I've seen that in a lot of aspects because they wanna be, they wanna be all close. They want, now they have grandkids and they wanna mm -hmm. be you know, close to that. And the know. proximity to DFW allows them to be able to travel and, yeah. and lock and leave and have the convenience of, of being able to leave their home because they don't have the big house anymore. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he's trying to rebrand DFW to DFWP. <laughs> DFWP, that's the new <laughs> term now, go. DFWP. Love it, love it. Well, hey, I think it will eventually. <laughs> well, we're the fourth largest city, fourth largest city in, in the Metroplex. Uh, right. We're a population of close to 290,000 now. Wow. Uh, we'll top out probably at about 300,000, so we're not really growing very much. Right from a residential standpoint we still have some opportunities for businesses right but um you know we're one of the major cities in the area we're work center so there's a reason there's no reason why i shouldn't be dfw <laughs> yeah well and i think we'll see um some different things turning in our housing i mean i you know my you know if i look at my crystal bo box and um, because people are wanting to be here i think Eventually, you'll see what's happened in you know Richardson and um, Dallas that you'll start to see um, some of those teardowns and mm -hmm. rebuilds, and we've seen some mm -hmm. in some little some more you know, mature areas. Yeah, sure. just because people do want to live, you know, in the city, and maybe they want something different, or mm -hmm. they want. You know, we've seen some add-ons and things mm -hmm. like that for growing because they like that yes. community. And mm -hmm. you have a, po a policy, right, for the city where we help with um, rebuilding the. Sure. So it's, it's some of the. It's, areas in the central part of Plano, mm -hmm. uh, more mature areas, we have yeah. the um, an a program where you can, and I'm drawing a blank in terms of the name of it now, but basically where we provide um, tax incentives, oh. incentives to for people who do real rehabilitation in their homes. Oh. And so you have to have a certain, it has, a home has to be a certain uh, age okay. and a certain value. Uh, and, and then based on how much renovations you do, we'll do a matching Oh, and it's wow. really encouraging um, a that lot. Is. A lot of the renovations that are being done in, in our in our city. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Just to keep it, you know, it keeps it growing and keeps yes, it, yes. keeps everything going. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. So, what do you? Um, what do we see for the future of our city? You know, what do we? You know, I mean, if we what's look, next? yeah, <laughs> what's, what's next? next? Well, so so I like to say. We're really uh, been in the era of th Plano 3.0, and right. uh, and I think as my, I have two more years as mayor, and uh -huh. I think we'll usher into that next phase, which is 4.0, where you know we call ourselves the city of excellence, right. but really it's going to be the city of excellence and innovation. I think we're going to see a lot of going to see us uh, really move forward and using technology in a in a very meaningful way to deliver services to our citizens in many different ways, and so. Uh, the easiest way I can think about is, for example, transportation. Yes. Uh, autonomous vehicles are, are going to, it's right around the corner. Yep. <laughs> uh, and that's going to be an opportunity to, to get let fewer cars off the road. It's going to be taking advantage of the ride sharing economy where um, with Dart, we already have this uh, program called GoLink where on demand app where we have shuttles going different quadrants of our city. Mm -hmm. So again, you can get to point A to point B with less, uh, without getting in your car. Right. Uh, and, and then we'll start seeing those delivery uh, uh, of services by using smart technology uh, um, uh, features like, you know, there, there's, there's methods where you can, for example, the lights will come on based not on a certain time, but based on the actual sunlight, oh, wow. and that'll that'll uh, deliver uh, co co be cost effective to, for our citizens. And those are the different things that we'll look at. That as we move into that next phase, we will be the city of excellence and innovation. Well, you know what? So uh, you guys remember um, the Jetsons? Yes. <laughs> we are yes. moving into the Jetson era. Sure, when we, we are. Watched that and we were like, oh wow. I remember watching that as a kid and just being like, oh my goodness, this is so cool. I mean, we are actually- <laughs> Have you heard of, about Uber uh, Elevate? No. Oh, no. Say Uber Elevate is expected to be come to our area by 2021 or yeah. 2022. And it's literally a drone that will take you from DFW to uh, the initial pilot will be in Frisco, oh. but we'll, it'll oh, eventually yes. come to Plano. 
and you you'll be able to get off your you know business person get out of plane get off their plane get onto this drone basically it's an autonomous vehicle that, that driverless and bring you to the Plano Frisco area within 12 to 15 minutes. Wow. And then uh, what I would imagine that next phase will be, then uh, there'll be an autonomous vehicle waiting to take you to what's called that last mile. Yeah. And you might not actually have a, ever get in the car, have a driver to get from point A to point B. Those are the things. <laughs> wow. It's really not that far away. I think wow. the technology is here. It's just a question of regulation and uh, and yeah. policy catching up to I'm technology. I'm a little nervous about the like no driver thing. Well, they'll have I'm somebody, to at the beginning <laughs> their plan their plan is to have somebody uh, somebody in there <laughs> so for comfort. For yes. comfort level the reality is they're really the, just there. And when you think about it there's drones being flown half across the world oh, yeah. and so it's just a question of a mindset and getting yeah. ready for it. Oh yeah, no, that's that is gonna be. You're gonna do wow. the initial ride. I'm gonna, <laughs> that's right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna videotape you. A little segment. Like, yeah. I know, and I'm not good with a, even like a roller coaster. Yeah, like, oh, community <laughs> cocktails in the air with Kimberly. Yeah, that's exactly. right. Yes. The first podcast in the I air. I think you're gonna have a lot of cocktails to make that <laughs> happen. Yes. Oh, do you know? And I have to do to get on an airplane. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it's you know. Oh, but that I mean, again, it's you know. It's just unbelievable just the, you know, where we're going and, you know, actually being able to really see all this, you know, it's just it's so neat and just so fascinating. So, well, okay, so we have two more terms um, and you guys are- Two more two years. Two more years. Two more years. Two more years. Two more years. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to something else. <laughs> <laughs> so um, two more years and we're empty nesters. Oh, where do we see each, um, ourselves after- these two years, are we going to continue this? You tell me. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, I, I know I'm working on my tennis game, so that's going to be consistent. So I'll see you on the court, okay, Kimberly. Right, right. I don't know what he's going to do. Well, it, it, you know, I, I don't know what's next for me. I just mm -hmm. I do know that, like I said, back in 1992, I knew I was going to be mayor because that was just my calling yeah. to service. Right. And so I will. I will. Ser I'll serve and help in the community in one way or the other. It doesn't have to be an elected position. Mm -hmm. I, I've i always felt that any elected position other than being the mayor of Plano is a demotion. <laughs> uh, so so we'll see. We'll see. We have, so we we will, have some your, time. Your name is not going to be a race. For, it's going to continue. We're yeah. gonna, just continue. He's not going to be the 21st person running <laughs> yeah. for president. Yes. No, I'm not, I'm not going to be on that list. I'll be 21 anyway. I have to wait to 2024. And I'll be out of out of the game. Well, and maybe you could join us on the tennis court. Yeah, I haven't seen you I'll, out there. No, I've been I'll, trying I'll, to get I'll him be, out there. I'll be, I'll be rooting. How's that? I'll be on the sideline. Well, you know, there's you could try pickleball. Pickleball. Well, yeah, that's one of the fastest growing uh, sports for adults. Is it recreation. Is. It and is. Pickleball. And we have pickleball leagues in Plano and we do parks and rec. Yeah, right. and they're yeah. and they're definitely um, it's growing. I mm -hmm. mean, they have pickleball tournaments. Now. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And so I didn't even know about that. Mm -hmm. um, but it is definitely a growing. Um, I haven't really gotten into it yet, but I'm <laughs> gonna. That's my next my there next thing. Once I have some you know more time, I guess sure. <laughs> I gotta practice my tennis game. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Well, and so we've got so we've talked about Plano. What else, you know, viewers, if someone's looking um at Plano and looking at a city, it's and uh, maybe we've got viewers that um watch this podcast all over in the United States and their questions on Plano, what would you um say is for them? Um, about Plano and why they should relocate here? So the cornerstone of any great community is public safety, mm -hmm. number one. Just, I think it was yesterday came out. Plano's the uh, second most sa safest city in America with a population of over 250,000. Second wow. to everyone. Uh, fantastic uh, school district. Mm -hmm. Last year, PISD was ranked second in the nation in uh, public schools. They graduate nearly 98% of the kids, 96% of, of them go on to higher education. Uh, we're known for our amenities in Plano, so you talked about your mom never leaving. Yeah. No matter where you live in Plano, you're a 15 minute walk from a neighborhood park. Mm -hmm. So tremendous open space. We have over 4,000 mile, 4,000 acres of parkland, 75 miles of hike and bike trail within our, our city limits. 
There's a park uh, on the east side of Plano called Oak Point Park, yes. which is about the size of Central Park in New York, to give you an wow. idea yes. of the scope. I did not realize it was that big. Yeah, so we have, we have that. And then the, the fourth component, which is the true cornerstone, is our people. We have, you talked about the sense of community. In 2016, uh, Money Magazine ranked Plano the third best city to live in America, best in Texas. Yeah. And the comment was that we were the largest, with the, we're the largest small city in America we, wow. because we have that sense of community. And anytime I put out a public call for to for our community to come together, whether it be for our summer internship program to hire our kids in our high schools for the summer, to feed our hungry kids in our school, mm -hmm. to provide services for the undernourished and un underserved communities, the community, both the business and the people, come together in such a meaningful way that that's really again that secret sauce is that is our people so that's the reason to come to Plano um, and just just recently yeah. we were voted the, the happiest city in America yes yes definitely definitely well it is it's I mean why not so well thank you so thank you. Thank you so much have, uh, well, for being on my podcast and I hope my viewers out there got a lot of information um, about Plano I mean I even learned something I'm growing up in the city. I've got learned even more about my own hometown <laughs> city. So thank you again. And thank you. Um, that's a wrap. Cheers. Make sure mom gets gets. Her, I her will. Pen, okay? And cheers. <laughs> and right. I will say, Mayor has water. Signature <laughs> <laughs> oh, drink. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in to Community Cocktails with Kimberly. If you'd like to contact Kimberly with your real estate needs, you can reach her at KimberlyWoodard.Evie.com. Hope you enjoyed our guest this week. Tune in every first and third Wednesday of the month for insights from industry leaders in your DFW area. Remember, don't just love your home, love your community.